Well, hey there, y'all, and welcome back to my kitchen, or welcome if you're new. My name is Bethany, or Budget Bethany, and I like to post these What's for Dinner videos every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. It hopes to give y'all some meal ideas to cook at home for your family as well. So if you're interested in easy, budget-friendly dinner ideas, I hope that you'll just keep on watching. So really quickly, I wanted to mention that today's video is in collaboration with Megan from Megan's Kitchen. So after you get through watching my video, head on over to her channel and check her out as well. And I'll have all her information linked down below in my description box for you to easily access it. All right, y'all. So really quickly, I need to review this air fryer. So if you're not interested in seeing this part, just go ahead and skip ahead to the actual what's for dinner. But Aki Home reached out to me and wanted to know if I would review this air fryer for them. And I accepted. So I reviewed it. You know, I was kind of on the fence if I even wanted an air fryer. But this one looked really huge. So I was like, maybe that will work for me. And it did. I'm in love with this air fryer, y'all. I cooked some chicken wings in there this week. And they turned out wonderful. Those are probably the best chicken wings that I've had in a very long time. So as you can see, the little tray is really huge that fits down in there and it's got like a little like no slip plate that fits in there i love that and it's also touch screen so you can set the temperature on whatever you need it to be as well as the timer for however long you need to cook your food that you put in there you can put it on different kind of settings i don't know y'all i just love it and i highly recommend this air fryer i'm so glad that aki home reached out to me to review this air fryer because i have fell in love with an air fryer who would have known <laughs> but anyway I'll have everything linked down below in my description box if you're in the market for a new air fryer as well. But look at the details on this, y'all. I just love that, like, gold-looking color. I don't know. It's just kind of different and unique, and I love it. But like I said, everything will be linked down below. All right, y'all. So to kick off this week's What's for Dinner, we're going to be making a bubble up pizza. I've seen many of my fellow YouTubers make this and I wanted to give it a try myself. I've never had it before, so this is my very first time. But all you'll need is some pepperoni, some pizza sauce, some biscuits, and some mozzarella cheese, and some cheddar cheese. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my biscuits up into fours and then pop them in my baking pan. Alright, so once we got them all cut up into fourths and then we throw them in our bacon pan, we're going to top them with some pizza sauce. I guess you could also use like marinara or spaghetti sauce, but I just chose to use pizza sauce. You're going to make sure you get your biscuits good and covered and then you're going to throw on some mozzarella cheese and then you can throw on your pepperonis and then we'll throw on some cheddar cheese. But of course, you can use whatever kind of cheeses you want, but I chose to use mozzarella and cheddar cheese. You can also add whatever kind of toppings you like on your pizza into this. Like you could add some bell pepper, some olives, some mushrooms, you know, whatever you like on your pizza, you could add to this. They're just gonna pop this in the oven on 350 for about 25 to 35 minutes. And this is how mine looked once it came out of the oven, y'all. It was really good. It tastes just like a, like a deep dish pizza that used to get like at Pizza Hut, I believe it was. Anyway, it was really good, and I just served mine with a side salad. We've just got some lettuce, tomatoes, and cheese, and then I've got some of the raspberry vinaigrette dressing, but you, you know, you can use whatever kind of dressing you like, but I feel like it pairs really good with a salad. And then on the next night, we were actually camping, and we were on the sandbar, and my husband's friend made hibachi on a, like, flat stone grill, and y'all, this was so good, but I thought I would share just a few clips from our little camping trip. All 
right y'all so we're finally getting into the air fryer cooking so i'm going to be air frying chicken wings for the very first time and here are the chicken wings that i'm going to be cooking i got them from walmart they're pretty inexpensive and budget friendly i think it was like 11 dollars for that four pound bag and then here is my wonderful air fryer that aku home sent me i love it so very much i can't tell y'all how much i love it i have never had an air fryer i was kind of on the fence did i need one did i not would it be big enough for all the food that i have to cook for my family and i just didn't think it would be worth it but they reached out to me and wanted to send me this air fryer for me to review and i'm so glad they did because i have fell in love with it i'm just searching my kitchen for things that i can put in this air fryer just so that i can be using it it's crazy y'all it's crazy that when you're an adult, you get excited over new kitchen gadgets, I guess. But anyway, I love this one, and I highly recommend it, and I'll have everything linked down below, like I've said before. But first, we're going to get to seasoning up our chicken, and to season my chicken, I'm just going to drizzle on some of this olive oil, and then I'm going to season it with some chicken lick bam bam and some Lowry seasoned salt. So y'all, I forgot to mention earlier that I did preheat my air fryer to 400 degrees and I'm going to cook the chicken wings like 10 minutes on one side and 10 minutes on the other side. So a total of 20 minutes altogether to cook my chicken wings thoroughly. And I do like to check one just to make sure that they are cooked thoroughly. And I always like to say that if you are going to try to cook it by the same time that I'm cooking, make sure that it's done because I'm pretty sure all different air fryers cook at different temperatures. And you always want to make sure that your chicken is done so that none of your family is getting sick or anything. So always check one to make sure that it's cooked thoroughly. So obviously I had to cook my chicken wings in batches just because you don't want to overcrowd your air fryer and you want to make sure that all the chicken wings are laid flat so that they all can get the equal amount of crispiness on them. And at first y'all was thinking that this was going to be a total inconvenience that it was going to be just a hassle having to cook so much chicken at different times. But after I tasted them, I have to say it was totally worth it. These chicken wings were so delicious y'all. So right here I'm getting ready to prepare a side to go with my chicken wings and I'm just going to be making a can of greens. But first I wanted to put in some bacon grease. If you're from the south i'm pretty sure you got some in your cabinet right now but anyway i just put that in there and like kind of let that melt down a little bit and then i'm going to pour in my can of greens and then i'm just going to kind of let them simmer on low until my chicken wings get through cooking And then by the kiddos request, I made some macaroni and cheese. I had found this Space Jam macaroni and cheese at Walmart on the clearance aisle. So I just throw that together for them. And then here is the sauces that we're going to be pouring over on top of our chicken wings. I've got some sweet chili sauce. That's mostly for me and Chloe because me and her do like a little bit of spice and the boys do not really care for it. So I just put some of the Kraft barbecue sauce on theirs. I do like to put them in separate bowls, you know, that way I can shake them up separately. And it does work better if you have a bowl with a lid. But one of my bowls did not have a lid, so I just had to make do with what I had. But you want to make sure that your chicken wings get good and coated in the sauce and here are our chicken wings but the once <laughs> they were all good and coated and then i just served it up with our greens and the macaroni and cheese the kids loved it and y'all even my kids are like mama these wings are so delicious so that air fryer worked some magic so if you don't have an air fryer i highly recommend you getting one and if you are in the market for one check out my link below 
So moving into the next night, I made a low country bowl and this is how I like to make my low country bowl and I'm pretty sure everybody does it their own way. But what I do is I wash and dice up my potatoes. I add some water to my pot and get that to heating up and I like to add the potatoes right when the water gets to boiling. I do like to cook the potatoes first because it usually takes them longer to cook than anything else. And I also like to season it with Old Bay season and some of the Tony's Creole season. We like a good old spice in ours, but I know some people don't, but we do. So I like to add a generous amount of these seasonings into ours. Once my potatoes are starting to get, you know, kind of soft, I like to add in my sausage. So I just cut them up into thirds. And I also like to add in my corn around the same time because it usually takes the sausage and the corn about the same time to cook. So I'm just cutting up the sausage right here into thirds and then we're going to throw them in the pot with our corn and our potatoes. Oh yes, by the way, I'm just using like frozen corn on the cob that you get in like the frozen section at Walmart. And then I like to add my shrimp last because it does not take them very long to cook. Once they turn pink, your food is done. It's time to serve it up. And then here is my low country bowl all served up and I do like to melt some butter with some garlic powder and pour that over on top of my potatoes and my shrimp. It's just so good y'all. And I also like to dip it in cocktail sauce. On the next night we had a root beer barbecue chicken as well as some loaded mashed potatoes. Y'all I was so excited to try this dinner. I just could not wait for the day to get here that I was going to cook this so delicious so that morning i got my chicken already and put that in my crock pot i drilled it on some olive oil and then i added my seasonings and y'all know i was going to add some lowry seasoning salt some garlic powder and of course some chicka lick of bam bam so if y'all have not tried any of that chicka lick of bam bam seasoning yet y'all have got to try it. i got mine from walmart and if i can find a link i'm gonna link that down in my description box so that y'all can go check it out because we love that seasoning over here y'all so once i got my chicken all seasoned up i'm adding in some of this mug root beer I don't know that the root beer actually gives any flavor to the chicken. I think it just kind of helps make it tender. And then once I poured in some of the root beer, I topped it with some of the Sweet Baby Ray's Sweet and Spicy Barbecue Sauce. This was our very first time trying this flavor of Sweet Baby Ray's, and I think this is my absolute favorite. I love the little kick that it gives you at the end, so I wanted to make sure that I got all my chicken good and coated, so I'm gonna make sure I rub it on each piece of chicken. Alright, so once I got all my chicken good and coated with that Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce, I just popped my lid on my crock pot, put it on low, and I cooked that for about six hours. Then for another side to go with our barbecue chicken, I wanted to cook some broccoli in the air fryer. Like I said before, y'all, I was just searching for anything to cook in the air fryer, really. So I decided I was going to cook some broccoli in the air fryer. Normally, I buy like the steamable packs from Walmart that you just pop in the microwave. But y'all, I was cooking broccoli in the air fryer on this night, and it turned out really good. So all I did was drizzle on some olive oil, sprinkle on a whole bunch of garlic powder. I preheated my air fryer to 390 degrees, and I cooked them for about 10 minutes. And I will say 10 minutes was probably a little bit too much because some of the broccoli was getting pretty crispy. But, I mean, I liked it that way. I'm probably going to still cook mine for 10 minutes. But if you don't like yours crispy, you might want to bump it down to maybe 8 minutes. And if it's not how you like it, bump it on up to a few more minutes. But here's how my broccoli looked once it was done cooking. Now we're moving into making our loaded mashed potatoes. And y'all, this was my favorite thing of all week. I loved this mashed potato recipe. So all you'll need is some potatoes, of course, washed, diced, and boiled. You'll need some shredded cheddar cheese, some mayonnaise, some sour cream, and some Dijon mustard, as well as two hard boiled eggs, some chives, and some bacon. 
All right, so if you're new here, then you probably don't know that I don't really follow our instructions very well. I don't never go by a recipe. I just kind of wing it and add my own ingredients, do my own thing. So this recipe was actually a loaded baked potato salad recipe and I turned it into a loaded mashed potato recipe. So all I did was, you know, I boiled my potatoes once they were soft. I throwed in about a half a cup of mayonnaise, a half a cup of sour cream, my two hard boiled eggs, and I'm probably about a half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Mix that up and then I'm gonna mash my potatoes. And then on top, I'm gonna add my crumbled up bacon as well as my chives and some more shredded cheddar cheese. So that's how I did it. But of course, I'll have the loaded baked potato salad recipe linked down below in my description box just so that y'all can get like more exact measurements and stuff like that or maybe you want to try the baked potato salad recipe more than a mashed potato recipe i don't know but this mashed potato recipe y'all was to die for it was so delicious to me I mean, come on y'all, just look how pretty she is. You can't tell me this does not look delicious. No, you cannot. So <laughs> here it was, I'll plate it up with our root beer barbecue chicken, our air fried broccoli, and then my loaded mashed potato recipe. That's it for this week, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this week's What's For Dinner. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already because I would really love for you to join my YouTube family. Thank you all so much for watching today. And don't forget to go check out Megan's video from today. I'm pretty sure she's got some delicious recipes over there for y'all as well. Thank you so much for being here today and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye, y'all.